You may not have a miracle in your hand, but you are about to receive a word. That is reason enough to praise him. Raise up your voice like Mary did and say, My soul magnifies him. My heart praises his name. Come on, somebody, just lift up your voice. If you had gone to your husband, you would be whispering sweet adoration. If you were before your child, you'd be whispering glorious niceties. But tonight, you are standing before the King of Kings. Take this time to honor him. Take this time to praise him. Take this time to show him or to show him who he means to you and what he means to you. Come on, someone. Raise your voice. Worship him. Welcome him into your house. Welcome him into your um, um, among your children. Welcome him into your marriage. Welcome him into your family. Welcome him right now. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, Lord. We glorify you, King of Kings. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Welcome the power of God into your room. Welcome the power of God into your house. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And where two or more are gathered, the Lord is already in our midst. And that is why we worship him. That is why we glorify him. Tonight it is you, the Holy Spirit, and your family, a threefold cord, is not easily broken. Come on, welcome the Holy Spirit. He says, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You have an entitleship to the power of God. You can call upon the power of God. Right now. These are the last days. It is no longer to only the house of Samuel. Not just to the house of David. But to your house. And my house. Declare it tonight. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will see dreams. Decree and declare it right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to welcome all of you to do to today's beginning of the week service. We are highly honored to be able to come into your home. We are highly honored to be able to minister to you at such a time as this. We thank God that there has been never been a better time to preach the gospel. We are bringing the kingdom of God into your house. We are bringing the kingdom of God into your family. You might have had people who never used to go to church. But tonight you can gather them around your television set and let's televise Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's speak about him. Let's lift up his name. Remember the anointing is multiplied through a pouring out. It is time to borrow vessels and not a few. Come on, take some time to wake up someone in your house. Take some time to wake up someone in your house. Take some time to wake up somebody if you are in the diaspora. Take some time. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I believe my volume is now right. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Lord. I've been duly informed that the Jessica Kanja Facebook page can be accessed. The Robert Kanja Facebook page can be accessed and the Jessica Kayanja YouTube page can be accessed as well. So feel free to view us tonight on DSTV, on DSTV on Star Times. Feel free to view us tonight on DSTV, on Star Times, on, Star Times, on, Star Times, on Azam, Azam TV, on Zuku. Zuku. Those are all couriers of channel 44 free to air, free to air uh, just feel free to tune on and view us hallelujah remember to guard against fraudsters there are people who will steal your money on social media they will go and say they have a relationship with us or they are us. And they will say, they, 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 you know, they will talk about our orphanages and our schools and then they will want to take money from you. We don't raise money on social media. So any Instagram that you see, you're not Instagram, Jordan. Any Facebook page that you see Over Facebook page, Jordan, that is asking you for money is a fake page. Get onto that platform. platform Embarrass them and report that. Do not allow people to defraud you. Hallelujah. Amen. We have been praying around the anointing on our hands. Tonight it is warfare again. Hallelujah. Amen. We got into the glory as a substitute for physical excellence. A physical, and it's not a substitute for physical excellence. It's not a substitute for physical precision. It's not a substitute for, 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 for working hard and being in order, but it is an addition to. But when we got into the glory, we discovered that it was a wider topic than we had started, than we had imagined before we started. We decided not to close up this topic just for the sake of going back to our hands until we are done with it and we will soon be done with it and we will go back to praying for the anointing on our hands and we, we still are praying for the anointing on our hands even, even now but we are praying for the glory of God to be on our hands but we are praying for the glory of God to be on our hands yes Father one more time I present myself as a vessel willing to be used of you I pray that if there be anything in me that is more of me that I will decrease tonight so that you may increase I pray that your word will come forth as the sword that it is to divide, to differentiate, to put us at a point where we are separated from attack because of the glory. Father, I pray that you will anoint my tongue like the pen of a ready writer for clarity of speech so that no one will live here the same way they came. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I want to welcome all of you who are viewing 
viewing us online online and i want to especially welcome the top chat group you are welcome i'm always honored and blessed to have you here and i know that you are making petition every single day and every single hour hallelujah amen hallelujah thank you jesus allow me to read the texts for today Psalm chapter 3. David. Dawudi. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me there is no help for him in God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read the next script, which is from 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I will begin at verse 38. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in this, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the porch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was a little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cast David by his gods. Come here, he said, I will give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword, spear, and javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Hallelujah. Amen. Allow me also to read. about the shield of Goliath. Verse 41. Meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to David. He looked David over 
and saw that he was little more than a boy glowing with health and handsome and he despised him I just wanted to make it clear again that Goliath had a shield that was held by a shield bearer And the Philistine and his shield bearer in front of him kept on coming closer to David. Meaning that David was, pro I mean, Goliath was physically protected by a shield that was held by a shield bearer. Hallelujah. I'm going back now. Now, I hope someone is ready for battle. David in the Psalms now says, Lord, they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me there is no help for him in God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the one who lifts up my head before I start with the word. I want you to know that there is no word in any sentence in the Bible that is there by coincidence. All scripture according to the Bible in 2 Timothy chapter 3 is inspired by God. And scripture is not just the message. Scripture is the word. And every time that you are looking into the Bible, you are not focusing on just the message. You are focusing on the word. The word of God. You are focusing on every word. And when there are words in the sentence, they carry greater words weight than the words in a novel. Because this is the word of God. This is a spirit filled and uh, uh, inspired word. This is an anointed word. So when you find words in the same sentence, you know that those words are related to each other. The Holy Spirit has specifically chosen them to dwell in the same place, the same sentence and to bring out a specific meaning for that time. And therefore, not, not just one word, not just two words, not just the meaning, not just the message, but the word of God in its entirety. And when you look clearly, there are words which start with beginning and yet the beginning means something as well but here the psalmist has combined three words and he has put the glory in the middle of those words and he is referring to God and he says you are my glory. You are my shield. You are my glory. And you are the lifter of my head. Meaning with God, you will find the glory, but you will also see the shield. And when you see the shield and the glory, he will become the lifter of your head. Because according to the psalmist, 
the attributes of God. He does not exist without the glory. He does not exist without lifting your head. He does not exist. Oh, come on, somebody. Without being a shield. As long as he is God, the three of them will be here. And David writes this psalm at a difficult time of his life. He acknowledges that he has enemies. He acknowledges that there are people that have risen against him. He acknowledges that there are people who are fighting him. David was a realist. He was not the type of man who walked around pretending and saying, I don't have enemies. Everybody loves me. I'm at peace with everyone. No. David acknowledged that there was attack on the outside world. He acknowledged that enemy was raging among the people who looked at him. Maybe they were jealous. Maybe they just hated him. Maybe they didn't believe in his God. But he says at this time, many have risen against them. Me. And they are saying of me, there is no help for him. And then he says something powerful. He says, but you, O Lord, are my shield, my glory. And the lifter of my head. But you, O oh Lord, are my shield, my glory, and the lifter of my head. Tonight, I want you to know that where the glory of the Lord is, there is divine protection. And divine protection is a shield. When the Egyptians were pursuing the children of Israel, the cloud, who is the glory, moved behind the children of Israel to protect them from the Egyptians. Tonight, I don't know what is pursuing you, but I'm here to encourage you that there is a shield, divine protection, a shield, whatever pursues you cannot touch you, whatever fights you cannot break you. Whatever sends come to you can never see victory because there is a shield. There is a shield. There is a shield where there is glory. There is a shield. The Egyptians pursued, but the shield was between them and the children of Israel. I know somebody has already begun to pray. But even before we go into prayer, allow me to teach you tonight about the shield. Hallelujah. I want them to put a picture of the shield on, on, on the screen so that you can see that shield. Hallelujah. Amen. That is a wonderful picture of the shield. Now, as you can see, a shield is there to protect you from the harm. A shield is there to protect you from destruction. A shield is there to protect you from the arrows and the sword of the enemy. The shield may, will not necessarily stop the enemy. The enemy will move on. The enemy will go ahead. I want to know whether my shield is showing. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we showing the shield? Hello? Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to know that the shield, I really want you to show this shield when I'm teaching right Amen. now. Because my teaching is going to come from it. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. A shield Engabo. is held by an individual e to protect the individual from being hurt. A shield is a form of protection. And as you can see right there, there, there is an army holding shields. I hope you can see it clearly. You don't even have to show me, but you can show the shields. Amen. There is an army holding shields. Hallelujah. Amen. And the shield is protecting the individual. When someone holds a shield, it is not to stop the battle. When someone holds the shield, that is okay. This is this is enough. This is enough now. Thank you very much. This is enough because I need to continue with the sermon. Thank you very much for your attempt. <laughs> Thank you. When someone holds the shield, it does not mean that the battle has come to an end. When someone holds the shield, it does not necessarily mean that you will not be fought. When someone holds the shield, it doesn't necessarily mean that the war is over. When someone holds the shield, it means that the individual has protection Hallelujah. Amen. against the darts of the enemy. When someone holds the shield, it means that no matter how much they try, no matter how much they fight, whatever they send you will not harm you. Whatever they send you will not penetrate you. Whatever they send you will have no effect on you. And David's psalm is amazing. We have seen him in other psalms say, turn back the enemy. We have seen him in other psalms say, may my enemy see darkness and slipperiness. But this time right now, he's not talking about the enemy's death. He's not talking about the enemy falling into a pit. He's not talking about the enemy turning back. He's not talking about the enemy seeing darkness. This time round, David is saying, you, O oh Lord, are my shield and my glory. In other words, Lord, they may fight, but I am protected. They may rise up, but I cannot be touched. They may plant, but their flowers will fail because in the kingdom of God I am not vulnerable in the kingdom of God I am untouchable oh come on somebody he said you are my shield and my glory I know that they have risen I know that they are planning evil I know they are desires towards my marriage I know Agreed. 
agree with you. We are living in a world of battles. And that is why God says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through him to the pulling down of strongholds. Come on, somebody. Amen. The reason we need a shield is for divine protection so that when you cannot dictate to the battle to stop, God can dictate where the harm stops. Oh, come on, so when you cannot dictate when the battle should start, God can dictate where the arrows will stop. He says, oh God, you are my shield and my glory. There are many people who underestimate the power of a shield, but you don't know that the heathen are so much into protection. And as we go into spiritual warfare tonight, it is important for you to know that the heathen wake up every day to look at how they can protect themselves. When they open shops, they are carrying charismas. They put small gods in their shops. They burn charcoal and incense. All in the name of protection. When you ask them why they are doing that, they are saying this is our money that we are protecting. This is our business that we are protecting. The heathen know that they do have enemies. But the Bible says that we should be as wise as the children of Mammon. The heathen carry charms and charismas into their marriages. The heathen carry charms and charismas into everything that they own only to keep out the enemy. But David decrees and declares one thing. He says, no, it is you. Oh God, you are my shield. You are my glory. I'm now beginning to preach to you. The main part of my script talks about David, a young boy ready to fight an enemy Goliath that has been in Israel for years. David is in the new generation. He doesn't know when Goliath started. He doesn't know how much his father suffered with Goliath. He is the last born of his father. He doesn't know how much his brothers have suffered with Goliath. But he knows one thing that God is his shield and his glory and he goes to the battle and he discovered that everyone including his own brothers they are carrying physical shields against this enemy who they have failed to defeat from generation to generation I don't know which enemy has taunted your clan, has taunted your tribe, has taunted your life, has taunted your relatives from generation to generation. But I want you to know that even the way they have safeguarded themselves has not helped because Goliath is still there. He's still taunting at them. He's still laughing at them. Goliath is not afraid of their shield. I don't know what Goliath is in your lineage. Maybe it is disease. Maybe it is cancer. Maybe it is sickness. Maybe it is poverty. Maybe it is marriage. But Goliath had been there from generation to generation. He had taunted the grandfather of David. He had taunted the father of David. He had taunted the big brothers of David. And yet they all had shields. They are king too. Had a shield. But Goliath was 
was still taunting them. Goliath, Goliath was still laughing at them. Goliath, Goliath was still disrespecting them. Because Goliath, Goliath had the biggest shield of all. Goliath, Goliath had the biggest shield of all. The heathen have bigger shields than you. They protect themselves with sacrifices. They protect themselves with blood offerings. They protect themselves with killing animals. They protect themselves with their foreign gods. They protect themselves with evil worship. They protect themselves with everything that is ungodly. But despite the protection, your clan is still suffering with lack. Your clan is still suffering with debt. Your clan is still suffering with not getting married. Your clan is still suffering with not having children. David walks into this arena and he says enough is enough. I need to fight not just for my ancestors but for the generation today and the generation tomorrow. Goliath must stop now. Goliath must stop now. When David walks into the scene, his brothers, who are part of the army, have shields, but they cannot go towards Goliath. The heathen, as much as they have enchantments and charms and charismas. They are still afraid. They are afraid of battles. They are afraid of being bewitched. They are afraid of being out. Uh, divinated. They are afraid of sorcerers. And yet they say they have protection. And every time they are told that someone is bewitching them, they go back for even more protection. David's brothers were in the battleground. But they couldn't even offer to go down to Goliath. And yet they had shields. The rest of the army were in the battleground. They had protection, but they could not go down to face Goliath. But David knew, oh my God, you are my shield and my glory. I decree and declare tonight that we are getting into the battle. We are not afraid of curses. We are not afraid of witchcraft. We are not afraid of diviners. We are not afraid of evil declarations. We are not afraid of evil prayers. Oh, you may look at us, Goliath, and despise us. Goliath looked at David and he said to him, am I a dog? Do you need just sticks to destroy me? He did not know that, Goliath, that David had a shield that you could not see. Tonight, I want you to know that you have a shield and the glory that the enemy cannot see. You are not afraid of what the enemy has to offer. He will fight you, but he will not succeed. He will throw arrows at you, but he will not succeed. He will cast, but the Bible still says a curse that is not deserved will never alight. David said, I'm going into this battle for tomorrow's generation. I'm going into this battle for myself. I'm going into this battle. And he asked if the, somebody wins this goal. What will they get? And he's told, do you know David? If you fight Goliath and he falls to the ground, you will get promotion. If you fight Goliath and he falls to the ground, you will get a wife. That is what his brothers had failed to do. The people in your lineage, 
warriors failed to fight Goliath. They have physical shields. They are carrying sticks in their backs. They are carrying back clothes. They are carrying small stones. They are carrying hair in their backs. And they are terrified of the enemy Goliath. But you and your children, you and your great-grandchildren, you are going to defeat Goliath because you have a shield, because you have the glory. David said, oh God, you are my glory. You are my shield. Tonight, speak the shield around your family. Speak the shield around your children. Speak the shield around your business. You don't need a charisma. You don't need back clothes. You need the shield and the glory. You don't need physical protection. You don't need hidden protection. You don't need ancestral protection. You don't need the protection of divine. You don't need the protection of shriners. You don't need the protection of castes. There is invisible protection around you. Decree and declare it tonight. Oh God, you are my glory and my shield. I don't know who Goliath is. I don't know who Goliath is in your tribe. I don't know who Goliath is in your clan. Goliath could be anything that has trained you for decades. Goliath had put the children of Israel on their toes for years. But now David is here and he's not concerned about the enemy. David knows that the Lord is his shield and his glory. And then the king of the army calls David and he realizes David is not protected and he tries to dress David in the protection that is physical, the protection that is hidden, the protection that he does not know about. And David tries to walk with it. And he fails. I want to adjure you, man of God or woman of God, our protection is not the protection of the diviners. Our protection is never the protection of sorcerers. Our protection is never the protection of curses. If you try, you will fail at your tracks. David tried to move, but he couldn't even move. That day you try to put a charisma in your bag. You will have an accident. That day you try to carry back clothes. You will fall sick. You haven't tried that armor. You haven't tried that shield. You cannot manage it. That day you try to sacrifice to protect your marriage. Is the day you will lose it. You don't have that ability. You cannot sustain it. You haven't tried it. But David says, no, I cannot take your weaponry king. What has this weaponry done for us? It has been there all this time. But he didn't do anything. Goliath is still here. If the charismas were useful, if the back cloths in your handbag, tying hair, put, put, put together with hair and sticks was useful, those diseases would not still be in your linens. You would not still be you would not be in lack. You would be living a happy, prosperous life. But because the charisma 
the shield of th that is hidden. The shield that is ancestral. The shield that is ungodly. The shield of the ancestor is not successful. You still have Goliath. David refuses to take that shield. And he says, no. I will go the way I am. And he goes. He picks up five stones. I will not get into the five stones today. But he goes ahead to fight Goliath. And Goliath looks at him and sees that he's small and sees that he's young and despises him. But he doesn't know that even though the physical protection is not showing, there is divine protection. I speak to you tonight that no matter how young the people are in your household, they are shielded from ancestral spirits. They are shielded from curses. They are shielded from attacks. They are shielded from witchcraft. Goliath may be looking at them and he may be saying, where is their tarism? Where is their back cloth? Where are the hair and nails? Who is the witch doctor? How do they think they can prevail against me when they have no hidden protection. He doesn't know that as small as you are, as short as you are, as invisible as you look, there is a shield around you. Oh God, you are my shield and my glory. You are my shield and my glory. And David says to Goliath, you come against us with sword, with spear, with shield. But I I'm not carrying that type of shield. I'm not carrying the shield that you're carrying. I'm not carrying a heavy shield. I refuse to carry the shield of the king. Those shields of the heathen are very heavy. They demand sacrifices. They demand gods. They demand kids. They demand animals. They demand money. I can't carry them. I'm too small to carry them. But today, I am carrying a shield that was freely given to me by Jesus Christ at the cross at Calvary. I am divinely protected. I am not vulnerable. I am untouchable. I am not vulnerable. I am I know you despise me, Goliath. You are saying, what is she standing on? Where is her protection? We will deal with her. We will cast her. We will kill her. We will destroy her. I want you to know, Goliath, that I will not speak death to you. My God will deal with you. But I am protected. I have a shield. And the fiery darts of the enemy cannot touch my body. The fiery darts of the enemy cannot touch my marriage. The fiery darts of the enemy cannot touch my children. The fiery darts of the enemy cannot touch my business. The fiery darts of the enemy. Goliath approached David with a shield. His shield was so big. <laughs> that he had somebody who was carrying it for him. Ah, the shield of the enemy is so big. They are carrying suitcases of cow's horns in them, of folded back clothes, of, of, of physical spears. They are carrying a heavy burden. They must go back to the shriners every other month to fulfill their obligation. They are carrying a very heavy shield. They are carrying a very heavy shield. But here we are, the David generation, as light as we can be. And we are here to boast. We are saying the name of the Lord. It is a strong tower that righteous run into it and are saved. 
I don't need to carry horns. I don't need to put those small baskets under my bed. I don't need to carry dried up animals. I don't need to wrap up teeth. I don't need to hide umbilical cords. I have a shield. My shield. My glory. My shield. Goliath was carrying a shield. It was so heavy that he couldn't carry it for himself. My shield is so light. My shield is so light that even my children can carry it. They have carried it from the day they could say God. They have carried it from the time they were three. From the day they could say Jesus. They have carried the shield. Even the youngest in the household of God. My glory. My shield. Goliath's shield was heavy. I'm warning you. If they want to, you to get involved in these traditional shields, they are telling you do it profit, profit protection. Do it to have a child. Do it to get somewhere in life. That shield is not worth it. It is too heavy. It is not sustainable. You will have to invite people to hold it for you. You will have to invite people to do something about it for you. You will have to invite people. You have to invite people. You have to invite people. You have to invite people to do something for you. My glory and the lifter of my head. 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 My glory. I'm the lifter of my head. My glory. I'm the lifter of my head. Hallelujah. Amen. My glory. I'm the lifter of my head. My shield. My glory. I'm the lifter of my head. My shield. My glory. I'm the lifter of my head. David. David. Approaches. Goliath. Goliath. With nothing. But he says something powerful to me. He says, you come against me. With your own sword. With your own spear. With your own shield. But I am coming against you. In the name of the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. That, that name is a mighty fortress. The righteous run into it. And they are shed. Saved. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Where with you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Hallelujah. Amen. The shield of faith. The darts of from the enemy will be deactivated. The shield is there to disorganize, to extinguish, to stop the attack of the enemy. Not to stop the war, but to stop the arrows, to stop the swords, to stop the spears from hurting you. And that day, 
the shield of God prevailed against the shield of man. I don't even have to say anything else except to remind you that in Psalm chapter, chapter 35 verse 2 David says, Oh God, take up your shield and buckler and arise to my help. Take up your shield and your buckler and arise to my help. Take up your shield. I don't want the heathen shield. I don't want the shield of the king. I I don't want the shield of the army. I don't want the shield of the enemy. I don't want the shield of witchcraft. I don't want the Mayembes. I don't want the Bachwezis. I don't want any shield. That is too heavy to carry. Goliath carried someone to carry his shield for him. My shield is not a burden. My shield is the glory of God. My shield, my glow, and the lifter of my head. Tonight, I speak the shield against every fiery dart of the enemy, every witchcraft raised against me, every divination, every sorcery raised against me, raised against me, against my ministry, raised against my family, raised against my marriage. Oh, I speak the shield. Arise, Lord. Raise a buckler and shield for me. Many are risen. There are many foes before me. But you, O Lord, are my shield. You are my glory. Lord, I am going into battle now. I am not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers of darkness, against rulers of powers of darkness, against wickedness that exalts itself on high. And as I get into battle, I put on the shield of faith. I put on the shield of faith. I put on the shield of faith. With faith, nothing is impossible. Lord, I am wearing this shield that you will protect me from the arrows of Goliath, the Goliath that lived in generations gone by, the Goliath that has taunted my family, that has disorganized their wealth, that has disorganized their health, that has disorganized their, their ability to get married, that has disorganized their ability to get children. Oh, Oh, Goliath, I come against you in the name of the Lord. I do not have a charisma. I do not have a charm. But I have a shield. He is a mighty fortress. They that run into him are safe. My shield and my glory. 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 Come on, someone raise up your voice. Raise up your voice. Begin to decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus. Decree and declare we don't have a physical field. We don't have a physical shield. We don't have an ancestral shield. We don't have them. We have a divine shield rides in the glory of God. Speak the cloud. May he be as a shield to every ancient gate that pursues you. 
wonder that. Speak to the cloud. May he be a shield to every disease that your grandparents suffered, that you are suffering today. Goliath had taunted the generations of Israel, but David, the younger generation, was able to fight. Today, the Goliath in your lineage can be brought to an end. Come on. Amen. Tell him, you come against me with sword and spear and shield, but I have come against you in the name of God, my glory, and the lifter of my hand. my glory, and the lifter of my hand. You are watching tonight, and Goliath has taunted you from generation to generation. People die young in your family. They have protected themselves with charisma and charms, but they have still died. You are watching me, and in your family, people are poor. They have protected their businesses with artificial shields, with man-made shields, with shields from man-made gods, but the businesses have still died. The businesses have still perished, but today, I want you to know that you have a shield that protects you from the darts of Goliath. You will not suffer like they suffer. You will not be afraid like they suffer. David's brothers were afraid. The king was afraid. But David was not afraid because of his sword, because of his shield, and his glory. Glory. My shield and my glory. My shield and my glory. Come on, declare it around every ancient gate, around every Goliath that has lived from generation to generation. Every Goliath that has defied your clan. Every Goliath that has defied your family, every Goliath that has defied the people around you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I wanted to read about Goliath before I come to an end. A champion named Goliath, this is verse 4 who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor. I wanted you to see that Goliath was so heavily protected. Goliath was protected by that which was physical. But David, with his shield, was able to come against him. Do not fear the shield of the heathen. There are people who land on charms and charismas and they are frightened. You find them and they are terrified. Those are heavy shields to carry. Goliath had to have someone carrying his shield. David refused the shield from the king. The glory of God. Hidden in the name of God. Is the best shield you can have. As the worship team comes on tonight. I want you to continue to give your heart and your spirit 
to declaring and declaring the shield and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen You have overcome, you have overcome, hallelujah, Jesus you have overcome.